What's up guys, Philip here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest. Let me introduce you guys to Mr. Henry Kwan. <clears throat> hey guys, what's going on? My name is Henry Kwan. I am partners with Philip um, at a photography company that we started together called PHK Photography. And today he brought me onto his channel for the very first time to talk about something very important to you guys at least um, in our lives. So today we're gonna be talking about what kind of camera you should buy, mirrorless or DSLR. So as you guys already know, I shoot with the Sony um, mirrorless. I made this decision maybe around five years ago. I used to shoot with a Canon, but uh, back then that's when mirrorless first came out and I wasn't quite too sure, but I kind of jumped the gun and got a mirrorless and ever since then I really fell in love with it and mirrorless is awesome. <clears throat> so the reason I got a DSLR has a lot to do with how I got into photography in the first place. My story on how I got into photography starts in California with Philip actually meeting a bunch of these photographers underneath this pier accidentally and I really got into it just because I, I saw how they saw the world through a lens and it was just so vastly different from how we just see everyday things. Because of that, we got back from our trip and I wanted to buy a DSLR, but I wanted to buy one that wasn't incredibly on the cheaper side, but still allowed me to um, get everything that I really wanted to take pictures of and in some sort of professional manner. So I started out with the Canon 6D and it did come with the kit lens, the 24 through 105. And um, through years of using it, I've just absolutely come to love DSLRs. I have absolutely come to love Canon. That's, pretty, that's probably like the most basic thing to say, but I now, I now have the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV and I've absolutely been in love with this ever since. So when I first got this, I was really skeptical of buying this just because back then I was using a DSLR and you know, like everyone wants that DSLR look. It looks professional. And then when this came out, like it looks nothing like a DSLR. Like it looks like a bigger point and shoot. Yeah, so when I first got this, I was like, uh, I don't know. Like people are gonna look at me and be like, oh, what is he shooting with? But like as years and years of using this, like that didn't really matter um, because I really got used to this. Like it felt good in my hands. It's really small and it can do pretty much the same thing a DSLR can do. And then it just looks that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> say it. And it just looks aesthetically pleasing to me, at least. Um, very compact, especially when you're doing like big shoots where it's like all day. You know, it won't strain your wrist as much as a DSLR. Way lighter. Everything's more compact, and that's why I really fell in love with mirrorless. If you actually look inside the system in here, there is no mirror where it like flips up like this. It is just one flat sensor and that's what makes it a mirrorless. I'm not gonna stress this enough, but I just really love mirrorless over DSLRs. So why I love my Canon DSLR? Um, it's the functionality and the user AI, AI, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, user friendly. And as far as me trying to use Philips Sony, sometimes when I do try to use it, it's like I'm driving a spaceship. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Or it's like when you go to a brand new hotel and you try to use their shower for the first time and you have absolutely no idea how to turn the hot water on. Yeah, it's like that. But the Canon is just incredibly easy to use. The menu and everything is just so user-friendly and I absolutely love the fact that you can use uh, the custom controls on this so that you can actually add exactly what parts of the menu you want in your in a separate tab just so it's super easy access. On top of that, you have the autofocus feature that everyone just loves from Canon just because it's just such a diehard thing that they've always kept as far as their um, their newest technologies that they're punching in. They just absolutely do such a phenomenal job at keeping up with the autofocus, if not being the best in the business. <laughs> <laughs> One second. <laughs> Sony. They also have really good customization functionality. Um, yeah, how are you just gonna jump in like that? Yeah, pretty much what Henry said, Sony has like their own stuff of everything, like all the way from customization, autofocus, we have face detection. Um, I believe it's like 200 something face detection points. I'm not quite sure on that, but 
Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, but honestly, it's just whatever your preference is. Because whatever camera you buy, it's still gonna be the same thing. It's just gonna be a little bit different, different UI and everything. I mean, yes, Canon is still one of the superiors right now in the market, but I believe Sony will... Sony, they're slowly reaching up there. They're pumping out a lot of new products since last year. Kind of made me upset because I bought my A7R2 and then like a month later, the R3 came out. And I was like, man. But anyways, still like I love Sony products. In the end, it's just whatever suits you. Every camera is going to be a little bit different, but they all come together as a photographer and a camera. And that's what's, that's what's important. Some of the cons. Um, what well, a few of the reasons why I really don't like my DSLR and it's not it's it's the cons about my camera or the DSLR are just <laughs> DSLR um, and it's in no way are these reasons um, in any way deal breakers but there are some times where I just feel like they could have made just some tiny improvements and one of them being the size. The size of this guy is actually ends up being like a double-edged sword whereas compared to uh, Philips um, mirrorless, I could probably drop this a few times and it'd be okay. I'm not saying like you ever should try. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> encouraging you to go try and test the durability of your DSLR, DSLR at home. But if you ever feel like whichever camera is more durable, I can guarantee you the answer is a DSLR. Um, Philips camera is incredibly small bodied and it, it, it just tends to look a little more fragile. My camera, it is very bulky, so that's a pro and a con for me. Because it's bulky, it's I just feel like, oh yeah, I'm holding a camera. <laughs> Whereas some of the con is, oh yeah, I'm holding something probably 10% my weight. Especially with, <laughs> especially <laughs> if I add the 73200 millimeter on this guy, this thing becomes like 20 pounds and it's just absurd to hold, especially because Philip and I do a lot of wedding shoots. Um, when we're on our feet for 12 hours straight and we have just absolutely no time to rest and I'm holding a 20 or 20 pound massive camera that I can't afford to like either bump around or anything like that it just becomes kind of a pain in the butt and I'm gonna tell you right now you guys better work out whichever your your stronger arm is some of the other things that I sometimes don't like is the video functionality as we're actually right now we're recording on Philips second body Sony and I'll tell you right now, guys, as far as video goes, Sony wins. I'll tell you that. Um, I actually bought the 5D Mark IV mainly because the 6D that I had just could not keep up even remotely with Sony's video capabilities. So I bought this guy. And in all honesty, the reason I didn't get the 1D X is mainly because I didn't want to sell a kidney to buy one. Um, so I went with the 5D, which has fantastic video capabilities, but it's still just in the shadows of a Sony. It's just f the Sony's video cap capabilities is just so fantastic. And I can't really praise them enough of how they've done that. So Canon, if you're listening, if you're watching, I love you guys, but y'all should step your video game up. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest thing is how small the battery is and how short of a charge there is like I have to go I have probably like seven batteries and I go through all of them if I'm doing like an all-day wedding shoot unlike with Henry's camera yeah. battery is way bigger he can last all day with maybe just one maybe two pushing it but so for example we actually just did a wedding this past Saturday it was actually ended up it actually ended up being a 14 hour shoot and I shot all day with one battery and philip i saw i saw him switch batteries like six times that day there are some different reasons for that mainly just because philip was shooting in video the entire time so that might have had a lot to do with why philip's battery was dying a lot faster but even when we're just on regular shoots it when philip and i just go do landscapes or we go shoot a buddy of ours not like literally um with the camera but yeah when we just go on regular shoots, Philip tends to switch out his, his camera battery at least once or twice, whereas I am totally fine for like the next three days on just like regular shoots. The con that I have is if you guys have an A7R2 or A7 II or A7S2 and under, you guys are not going to have the touchscreen functionality. That was like the biggest thing I was kind of upset about because Henry's camera, the 5D Mark IV, that one came with touch, uh, with the touch screen. It's so easy, like, 
with mine, if I want to focus onto like a certain point in frame, I have to like use these knobs and scroll and everything. But with Henry's camera, you can just press on the screen where you want to focus on and it just it's just so instant. With me, I have to do all the scrolling. That just takes like extra 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, probably not a minute, but like more time than it should to focus onto a point. But Sony, they did redeem themselves and all their new cameras that are coming out these days. They all do have touch screen. So hopefully one day I can upgrade to that. But until then, I'm just stuck with scrolling to focus onto like a subject's eye or a subject's face. Another one of my cons that I'm extremely envious of, of other DSLRs and other Canon or other uh, Sony products, for example, like Philips, is this is the year 2018. This is the 5D Mark IV, the latest in line of, of Canon's 5D cameras. And I still don't freaking have a flip out screen. That that's amazing. That that is that is crazy. All right, my car has a flip out screen. That that's amazing. That this this is a camera that costs me an arm and a leg, and it's I, just, I mean absolutely love does not have a flip out screen. I cannot. I mean I I can vlog with this, which I normally do, but it's extremely difficult sometimes, and a lot of times I do get very upset because after I do a shoot or after I do vlogs, I realize that I was not in focus like the entire time, and. That's something that's easily fixable if I just had a flip out screen. Now, they did try to redeem themselves, the Canon did try to redeem themselves by adding a flip out screen to the uh, new Canon 6D Mark II. But um, that camera came out after I bought my 5D Mark IV. One thing I do love about Sony's is their video capabilities. Um, it can film, it can shoot and film really well in low light just because it is mirrorless. Um, the DSLRs, they can shoot pretty well. I mean, they're all, they're known for um, shooting well in low light, but mirrorless cameras, they're, they're slowly creeping up there. Um, there's not a lot of noise. Like I can shoot at like 3000 ISO and it'll still be like pretty clean. It'll be little <laughs> grainy, but uh, I don't know about other mirrorless cameras. I know like the Panasonic Lumix GH5, those can shoot in 4K. And then the one that we're currently filming on, the A7R2, that one also shoots in 4K. And one thing I really like about this one is it has a Super 35 sensor. So once I turn that on, it's gonna crop um, what's in frame, but everything that is in frame is gonna be there's no uh, loss of detail um, Especially low light like you can pick up everything you won't lose anything like any color any distortion or anything uh, With the super 35 and that's one thing I really do love about the Sony a7r2 and it's also convenient let's say uh, you're shooting with like a 55 millimeter lens on it and you turn that sensor on then that crops it to around like an 85 so Just with flip of a switch. I don't need two different lenses. I can use the same lens to Recreate a different look just turning on that super 35 millimeter And Henry's video sucks because it freaking has the file is so massive The file is so massive that like when we shot one time we shot in 4k um, with both our cameras and when I got Henry's files to start the edit I was so surprised on how large the file was so Canon shoots their files are shot in uh, MOV um, whereas everyone else on the face of this planet shoots on MP4 and the reason the problem with the MOV which uh, well actually it's, it's not that big of a problem if I'm shooting just in regular 1080 but if I'm shooting in 4k literally about like 30 seconds of video ends up being like five gigs which is like out of this world like i will run through my sd in a matter of three four minutes and it's just crazy how big these files are which is the reason why we no longer shoot in 4k unless we get paid extra to do so so um the moment you're all you've all been waiting for lenses um, one of the greatest things about DSLRs is the fact that their lenses are much more affordable. Um, I could buy the exact same lens spec as Philip and pay like an extra eight, 800 to 700 dollars less. And that's really, really convenient for people, especially if you're if you're doing this uh, professionally or if you're doing this um, as more into a hobby into becoming a professional. 
um, it's really really useful because you can have a wide variety of lenses shall your budget allow it whereas Philip um, with his Sony he has to end up paying anywhere from like 1.2 or 1.5 times more than what I have to pay for a lens but the cool thing with Sony is uh, you can fit other camera brand lenses on here you just need like an adapter uh, a really popular one is the Metabones adapter and then a lot of people get that uh, like I think like a good one is like around $600 and once you have that and let's say you want to use that Canon lenses you can adapt all any Canon lenses onto there but one thing I don't like about using an adapter is the autofocus system like you won't really notice it but it's just a tad bit slower than using like a native Sony lens um, so, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that shoot with an adapter, but personally, I just like only shooting in native Sony, just because I want the best, highest, and maximum potential of the Sony's autofocus system. So one thing that I really want to try and make clear to, um, you know, Philips viewers and our viewers is the fact that there is no one better camera. Um, you know, there's always, it applies to a lot of different things, whether you want an iPhone or, or I want a uh, Samsung Galaxy or, or however way it goes. But one thing we really want to make clear is that there is no one better camera. Um, it's really, really your personal preference on how you want to take your pictures and how you want your settings done or how you want to be able to fully customize your camera, how many lenses you want, if you want a lighter pack, if you want a heavier backpack, however you want to do it. There's just so many different features and capabilities that each of these com uh, computers. <laughs> computers. <laughs> There's so much that both of these cameras um, have to offer and their capabilities are just phenomenal in each way. And there's just no way to really be able to convince someone that one camera is better than the other unless you've actually just used that particular camera for just such a long time that you know for yourself that this is the one. It's like when you find the phone that you're comfortable with, so, you know, for example, this is probably another video that we could do. Um, I am an iPhone user all the way. Philip is a Samsung user all the way. And, and just... he is a MacBook user all the way. Yes, and I am a PC user all the way. And we could probably make another video on all those things as far as different editing styles that, that, that MacBook has to offer that PC doesn't and things that PC has to offer that MacBook doesn't. But it all comes down to what your preference is, what you like to shoot with, what you like to um, edit with, how you like to set up your camera, what you like your auto speed or auto, <laughs> what you like your autofocus to be. <laughs> So all in all, what we want to really convey to you guys is you can do all the research you want. You can look at all the forums out there. You can look at all the statistics sheets. You can all this. You can see all the stat sheets for um, each of the camera's individual specs. But it's just not the same as you just going out there and shooting with it. Um, I know for a fact that camera uh, there's a lot of camera stores that allow you to rent bodies for like twenty five thirty dollars a day and. You know, I really encourage you guys to just take that opportunity to just rent a couple bodies and see if you like DSLR better, if you like mirrorless better, um, because that's ultimately the only way you'll know for a fact that, oh, this is the way that this this camera is It's just tailored fit for me. And there's no forums out there that's going to help you um, convince you guys of that. Hope this video was helpful for you guys to choose your next camera. It could be either DSLR or mirrorless. And I'll leave Henry's Instagram right here. Don't forget to hit the like button. Drop a comment on what camera you prefer. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.